first thing all is every team actually design their own wheel. In the past, we've seen teams buying wheels from you know Momo and Personal and all the other like, typical manufacturers, but they design their own wheels. So you have the carbon fiber chassis, uh, you have the silicon hand grips. Uh, they will then have a, a face plate on the front, again, typically carbon fiber with lots of 3D printed details around the button. And this really, this what you would regard as the chassis of the steering wheel, tends to last for quite a long time. And if you look back through history, most of the teams will only have had four or five of these kind of high tech steering wheel chassis over the years. This one on the uh, Alpine uh, goes back to uh, the early Renault days, to 2016. So that chassis has effectively been in use now for five years and it's actually part of the homologation regulations this year as well. Um, and then within the team owned bit, inside you are also slightly restricted and this is all to do with the 2006 uh, ECU regulations. So the teams have to use that dash display. They have a choice of two, but obviously the, the LCD one that everyone uses is the one of choice rather than the old uh, LED one, supplied by McLaren Applied Technologies still, even after all of these years. Um, and also some of the internal electronics, the uh, interfaces uh, that then go back out through the steering uh, column to the ECU are all homologated. They have to use McLaren parts. That then restricts how many uh, buttons and how many paddles and how many rotary controls you have on the steering wheel. So they are a little bit limited in the compared to how they were sort of like pre-2006. And then effectively what you then have is you have uh, nine rotaries, about 20 buttons and four to six paddles depending on how you're operating them. So we know about the paddles at the back, you've got gear shift, you have clutch paddles and you can have multifunction paddles that group various functions together like you know, DRS and overtake or differential and braking settings to get the driver working the way they want. Then really the detail is in the button layout around the front. So if we uh, kind of go around anti-clockwise, um, first button uh, on the top corner is the uh, pit button, pit, pit lane speed limiter, fixes the, uh, the car at whatever the prevailing pit lane speed limit is. The driver will um, toggle that on and then toggle it off as they uh, leave the pits. We've seen that for many years. Then you've got the overtake button, OT, uh, does exactly what you would expect. It brings the um, engine up to full power, gives you the full beans in order to either defend or overtake uh, during the race. Um, again, this one is a button, some teams have that set up as a paddle. Uh, end below that is neutral. It's, it's the uh, car out of gear into neutral, obviously when the driver comes into the pits or if they have an incident out on track, it just, um, you know, it takes it out of gear, pretty straightforward. All of the cars have had these since uh, paddle shift gearboxes were introduced. Um, and then you've got two, a pair of buttons and I'll take these together. So you've got a plus 10 button and then over on the other side, a plus one button. And uh, what this is, is when you often hear on the driver radio, uh, the, the engineers selling them fail 21 or multi 21, God forbid for, uh, <laughs> for Red Bull. Uh, what the driver has to do is put one of the rotaries into the fail position. And then they basically add up with these buttons, the number that the, the engineer is asking. So it's 85, you do eight tens and then five ones. And that is the setting uh, that will go into the uh, ECU to turn off sensors or override uh, functions and bits and pieces like that. So again, it's a part of that housekeeping the driver has to do through the race to keep the car uh, working in tip top condition. Under that RCH, this is a recharge button. So this just is an option for the driver working with the hybrid system to make sure that the battery gets back up to full charge for uh, you know, an attacking lap. And uh, like a lot, all teams will run these in uh, with slightly different namings in slightly different positions. So just a, a fairly typical hybrid function. Uh, underneath that, um, the drink button. Um, again, uh, we've spoken lots about these over the years. Uh, there's a, a drinks bottle of about a litre of um, fluid in the car somewhere. Uh, some interesting thoughts on where those are nowadays. Um, and a pump, and that will just squirt drink into the driver's mouth uh, to keep them going uh, around the, uh, the race. Going now back up the other side of the steering wheel, um, you have um, a blank button. Be interesting to know what that is. It could be all sorts of things. It could be a pit confirm. Um, it could be a, a specific driver function, you know, it's not marked on here, so, you know, we can't really guess. Going above, uh, the rather uh, odiously named BO button, this is burnout. Um, and part of the driver's warm up, particularly for the race, um, but also other parts, parts during um, the, the weekend. 
that will override lots of the um, power unit um, settings, allow the drive to spin up the rear wheels to put heat into the rear wheels ready for the start, ready for um, uh, the uh, beginning of a session. Uh, the plus one button, which we'd uh, mentioned previously, and then uh, the OK button. Um, so this is like a confirm button. So if the engineer has given the driver an instruction, uh, he can actually push that rather than talking just to confirm back and the team will see that on the telemetry that the driver has just okayed um, whatever the uh, engineer has told him. Above that, R is for reverse. Uh, pretty straightforward. Again, we've spoken about it many times. Uh, the driver just literally to push that, it will take the gearbox out of um, forward gears and then with a separate hydraulic actuator inside the gearbox, engage the reverse gear allow the driver to uh, pull out of the uh, sticky situation they've obviously got themselves involved with. Um, can't quite see um, what's on the, uh, the the other top button on here. Um, so again, this is probably one of the key functions. It could be something like uh, the radio button, for example, or, or DRS or something like that. Um, again, you know, every driver has their own layout of buttons and they can change them simply with the software and by peeling the stickers off and putting something else on if indeed they have stickers. Interestingly, McLaren choose not to put any stickers on their steering wheel telling you what it is. They just have an orange dial and a blue dial and they play it that way, keeping it very secret, which is quite interesting. Um, you would have thought the driver would remember all of this in their heads, but you know the labels are on there for a reason. Then if we start to look at the rotary controls, um, what you'll have is the top ones uh, for your thumb operations tend to be the ones you use the most. So uh, on the uh, top side you have entry, and this is a differential setting. And this plays about with how tight the differential is on corner entry, because it's all under the ECU and hydraulic control. So if the driver wants to have uh, a bit more rotation in the car, um, you can loosen up the differential if they want the car to understeer more, then they can tighten the differential by playing around with these buttons. Um, and then when you go down to the one on the uh, inner spoke of the wheel, that's the mid corner differential setting. Again, very much the same thing, working out how the driver wants the car to handle, how he wants the um, power to pick up through the differential at corner exit. There are also other differential controls for exit. These tend to be hidden away on the rotary controls on the multifunction in the middle there and also one for high speed control as well which while the regulations say that you can only really replicate what you could do with a standard differential and I don't un believe there is a standard differential mechanical differential that can tell you whether you're going at high speed or low speed but they have that setting on the cars nonetheless. Going across to on the rotaries on the other spokes you have brake shape now this is quite unusual, most people don't really quite understand what this is. The, uh, the top one is brake balance, and again I think we can all understand about brake balance, we've seen it for many years. With a brake by wire system the driver no longer has to reach down into the cockpit for a manual adjuster. They can adjust the brake bias electronically, um, quite legally, uh, from this control to see how much front or rear braking they want. And that will obviously look after any lockups, any tyre condition issues, but also how the car rotates into the corner, which is a key part of getting the car to handle. So the brake shape is something slightly different. So if you think when the car is going at high speed, you've got lots of downforce, you pump your foot onto that brake and then you're hitting over five Gs of deceleration. That's great, at high speed when you've got the downforce, the front and the rear brakes have got more than enough grip um, to be full, you know, full force on the brake pedal. But as the, brake, uh, as the braking event goes on and the downforce starts to shed and weight shift moves towards the front, the rear tyres get much lighter against the track. So you can't apply as much brake pressure to the rear tyres. So the brake shape determines how the brake bias changes during a braking event. And again, this becomes quite important. If you're finding that you're locking up as you reach lower speeds, then you adjust your brake shape to move the bias slightly more through the braking event. And drivers will play around with this and they have lots of these pre-programmed, potentially also with differential settings on some of these paddles that you see um, behind the steering wheel, just so that for one corner or a handful of corners, they get a very precise mix of um, differential and braking settings to get that corner absolutely right. Some drivers play with this more than others, um, but it is very much a key tool in their toolbox for a fast lap, but also managing the car through a race when there's really nothing else that the driver can adjust other than brake and differential settings. Then when you look in the centre of the steering wheel, you've got the other rotary controls, and these are all mainly powertrain, but some chassis things as well. 
So on the left, you've got state of charge. So again, this is all about how much recharging, how much harvesting you're doing on the hybrid system. And the driver will be advised by the engineers on what setting to have the state of charge in order to get the battery up to the right state of charge um, through uh, a lap through the race. Underneath that, you've got scenario, which again is one of these kind of multifunction things. This will play about with powertrain, gearbox, hybrid uh, settings to get the right mix of settings. And I think we can recall a couple of years ago, it might have been even last year, when Lando was trying to get um, a podium position at the end of one of the Austrian Grand Prix. You could hear the mechanic, uh, sorry, the engineer saying, scenario six for this corner, scenario seven for that corner. And you can actually be coached very closely on what is the perfect setting um, for the powertrain uh, per corner. Over on the far side, you've got torque. So this is how much the hybrid system is putting out. Again, you can't play about with engine settings now. It's only the hybrid settings after the regulation that came out partway through last year. So this is how much deployment you get from the energy recovery systems uh, out of corners. Above that, you have a PU button. So this is lots of specific controls for the power unit, mainly for the combustion engine, but some of it will relate to hybrid settings as well. Um, and again, you know, we've seen you know, engine maps um, being fairly familiar on the steering wheel for many years. Then you come to the middle of the steering wheel and the big multicolored, multi-function uh, dial. And this really looks after everything else. Uh, and it's got lots of settings and it gets very complicated. And when you hear drivers being given quite detailed information on what to do with the car um, in a race, this is the control that they're working with. And this is the one that really then starts to come with the plus 10 and the plus one buttons. So in here, you will have things like, you have the, the differential setting for corner exit and high speed. You will have settings uh, even for the brightness of the display or the loudness of your earpieces and the beeps that the drivers hear for a lift and coast and uh, shifts. That stuff is in there. Um, lots of housekeeping for sensors and systems. And then you've got uh, some other ones. Some teams actually have a dedicated rotary for uh, tires. So you'll often hear, you know, Bono, my tires are dead. Um, and, you know, is that, is that Lewis actually giving him genuine information? Because on the steering wheel, the driver can actually communicate to the engineers the tire condition. So if they think they're at a certain phase of tire wear, they can set that on the steering wheel and that gets communicated via telemetry to the engineers, completely secretly to anyone else. So you could be shouting about how dead your tires are, but actually saying on your steering wheel, no, they're really good, keep me out. So that's all controlled from the steering wheel, as are when you're changing the car to intermediate or to wet tires, because they're a slightly different diameter, the ECU needs to know about it. And again, it can also set up some different settings on the powertrain uh, as well. So you've got all of these sort of controls under the driver's uh, fingertips. And there's, you know, there is an awful lot for them to do uh, nowadays uh, to, to manage the car. Uh, whether that's a good or a bad thing, I think that really depends on everyone's point of view. I think there's perhaps maybe too much on the steering wheel now. Maybe they do need to be simplified, but there's certainly no plans to change the regulations around the complexity of the steering wheels um, under the uh, forthcoming regulations. So with, with you know, the workload for the driver you know, very quite high from the steering wheel, then you would ask, well, why don't the, the teams make the changes to the car, particularly like the failure things uh, themselves uh, from the, the, the from the pit lane, from the garages? Well, that actually got banned uh, a good number of years ago now as part of the kind of the traction control and driver aids bans that have kind of come and gone over the years, there was a point that the teams could make setting changes to the uh, car on the fly from the garage. Indeed, I, I recall Ferrari had, a, before we had the standard display, had their own L, uh, LCD display. And I recall Schumacher got some Germany football results on the steering wheel from the team during a lap, which um, I don't know why anyone in Formula One would want to know football results, but clearly Schumacher did. So now everything has to be done by the driver. So, you know, they can only give him verbal instructions and not do anything remotely. But what the team do get is they get all of the telemetry from the car almost constantly around the lap. It doesn't wait till you've gone past the start finish straight anymore. There's beacons throughout the track and the telemetry is constantly beaming. So all of the settings on the car and interestingly, all of the settings on the steering wheel are also communicated from the teams. So when you see the big screens they have in on the, the pit wall or in the pit garage, one section of that will be saying in what position are all these multifunction um, uh, sensors set to. 
and you know, if a driver has knocked a, 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 a rotary out of position, then the, you know, the team can see that and then communicate that back to the driver. So there is some interchange, but it has to all just go in one direction. It can't go from the team uh, to the car uh, from an electronic point of view.